Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. He lives there. Good morning. My name is Philippa. I belong to the parish church. I scribble. I've supported our parish magazine, My Head Matters, in small ways for years. From the age of six, I've been enchanted by words and what they can do. My two readings are from the King James Version of the Bible. These words rumbled over my head as a small child. I was fascinated and wanted to know more and they eventually led me to the reality of Jesus. The first bit I've chosen is from the Gospel of St John, very famous, first chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This speaks to me of God's being everywhere, his everywhereness. As the Celtic saying goes, in the wild violet's beauty, in the lark's melody, in the face of a steadfast man, in a child's smile, in a mother's love, in the purity of Jesus. A few of us may remember old Mrs Spear, a vicar's widow. She knew God's presence. One person with God is a majority, she would say. Those of us who have been ambushed by God know that this is true. The disciple John knew it best of all. His gospel shows us Jesus in daily life, transforming it, enjoying a wedding, meeting someone at night, asking an outcast, a woman, for water, waiting for a meal in a friend's home, humbly washing feet, in close physical contact with John, his favourite, his best disciple, at supper, and entrusting his beloved mother to John's care. In, through, in and through all this everydayness, John senses how the many aspects of God go together to be part of our lives, bringing us close to each other and to God in a dance of love. The Celts loved John's gospel. My ancestors were Celts. The Celtic approach to faith helped to grow a people poor in things and rich in spirit. Don't we need that today? Close to creation, close to each other and to a God who gave light to their eyes and a holy meaning to their lives. Here is just one of their beautiful prayers. Give us the mind of Jesus, something of his brave heart as we sail over the waters of experience and days of sunshine and favouring winds and stars to be our guide when the sun is set. Yet this is but half our asking. Lord of pity, when trouble rises as a storm turning our trust to fear, Bring us into the quiet place of thy presence and be our haven. The second passage is from Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. This verse speaks of forgiveness, the message of Good Friday. Joseph, remember him, Technicolor dream coat, is revealing who he is to his brothers and they are shocked and conscience stricken and he consoles them. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you 
to preserve life. Joseph was a loved child. He knew this everywhere God all his life, but when young he was a little bit bumptious and he paid for it. His jealous brothers sold him into slavery. He was accused by his master's wife, imprisoned and forgotten. Yet, through it all, his, his, his knowledge of God remained intact and his love and forgiveness truly shows the hand of God in a human life. Recognising God behind everything has purposes for good. On Good Friday, the greatest forgiveness ever comes out of unimaginable suffering, making it possible for us too to put our small hands into God's big ones, to be forgiven and to forgive. <clears throat> In spite of all the horrors of today, we can look to the day where all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of thing shall be well. <clears throat>